Okay, welcome to my presentation on converting between units and SI with the international system. Um, this is presented so that if you need to convert between units uh, in SI or other units for, for that matter, uh, you would know how to do that. So we're going to walk through a really simple example. Uh, let's say you wanted to know how many meters are equal to 163 centimeters. Um, this is going to walk you through that very simple calculation so that when you get to more complicated ones, they will make sense. Uh, the nice thing about using SI units um, is that they're all based on units of 10, so the math involved is pretty easy. So the first method, which is the one that I prefer, uh, it's called the factor label method, or you might hear it called dimensional analysis. Um, I prefer it because it can work with any conversion, not just metric. It's a great way to set up any sort of conversion problem. And I really think you will benefit if you learn it. So the way we would start with factor label method is you need to know the relationship between the two units. In this case, we want to go to meters from centimeters. So we need to know how many centimeters equal one meter. And of course, in this case, it is 100 centimeters in one meter. So you would need to know that going in. Um, the next step is to make a conversion factor, which is basically just a fraction consisting of the two units you're converting between. So when you set up this fraction, you always want the unit that you're trying to replace on the bottom of the fraction. And uh, you will see why in just a moment. So the proper conversion factor here for this example would look like one meter over 100 centimeters because our original measurement was 163 centimeters and you would like to um, end up in meters so um, what it's going to look like when you set it up you take your original measurement and you multiply by your conversion factor so we take our 163 centimeters which was given in the example we're going to multiply it by our new conversion factor uh, one meter over 100 centimeters now what's going to happen is we have a case where we've got centimeters here in the denominator. We've got centimeters in the numerator. And just like in math class, that would cancel. So you kind of treat your units just like you would a number or a variable uh, from math class. So what's going to happen is centimeters will cancel. And we end up with 163 times 1 and we're left with units of meters in the numerator. And all we're left with down here in the denominator is a number, 100. Um, so obviously, 163 times 1 is 163. We still have units of meters. We divide it by 100. Our next step, and you probably would never walk through all this uh, in this many steps, but kind of trying to take it slowly here, would be to divide out uh, what you have left. So we've got 163 divided by 100. Um, do that in your head or punch it in your calculator, you get 1.63. And we are left with the units that we are interested in, which is meters. Okay. Um, now, why does this work, you might ask? Um, the reason it works is when you multiply by a conversion factor that's properly set up, uh, the conversion factor itself uh, equals 1. Okay. What I mean by that is when we looked at this conversion factor, 1 meter over 100 centimeters is uh, the numerator and denominator are the same value. One meter is the same as 100 centimeters. And we know from math class that if you have a fraction that's the same value on top and bottom, the value is one. Um, so that's really why this works. And it's a good method. So when we multiply through by our conversion factor, as we saw here, all we're really doing is multiplying through by one. We're not changing the value of the measurement. We're just changing, changing the unit uh, that is measured with. Okay, another quick example. Let's say we have a measure of 97 millimeters. We want to know how many centimeters that is. Again, you're going to need to know the relationship between our units of interest. And before you even worry about that, you might want to set up your conversion factor with the units uh, in the proper location. So I would want millimeters on the bottom or in the uh, denominator of this fraction because I want it to cancel. I want millimeters to go away, and I want to end up in centimeters. So I already know centimeters is going to go on the top. Now again, you have to know something about the unit system. Um, hopefully if you've studied SI units a little bit, or you just think about a ruler, you think about a centimeter, which is about the width of your pinky finger maybe, 
and there are 10 little marks inside, uh, that would be millimeters. So our conversion factor is one centimeter over 10 millimeters. Um, once you have that set up, it's just a matter of doing the math. So we can cancel millimeters. We're left with 97 times one on the top, which of course is 97 with our unit that remains centimeters divided by 10. 97 divided by 10 is 9.7 centimeters. So 9.7 centimeters is equivalent to 97 millimeters. Now there is another method um, that a lot of students learn along the way called the stair step method. Um, I don't really prefer this one. It's a little bit simpler, but it only works for SI units and it's only gonna work if you're converting between units between kilo and milli. Um, so keep that in mind, it's a little bit limited. If you wanted to use this method, you would need to know the base units uh, between kilo, a kilo and milli. And those going up from the base unit uh, would be deca, that means 10 of the base unit. Hecto means 100 of the base unit. And kilo means 1,000 of the base unit. Going the other direction, deci means 1 tenth of a base unit. Centi means one one hundredth of a base unit, and milli means one one thousandth. So what I mean by base unit would be any standard uh, unit that you're going to use in the SI system, like meters, liters, grams. So once you have that, um, again, you would need to know kind of how to set up that stair step uh, on paper or in your mind. Uh, and you're going to move along the stair step to the stair step that has the unit you would like to convert to. So in our original example, where we wanted to go from 163 centimeters to meters, um, we would have to travel two steps up the stairway. What I mean by that is we're uh, starting at a measure in centimeters right here. And we want to end up at base unit, which is two steps up on our diagram. So if we move up the stairs, the rule is move your decimal place to the left. If we move down the stairs, the rule is to move your decimal place to the right, which corresponds to the way that I've drawn the diagram on the screen. So we start with our original measurement, 163 centimeters. We don't see a decimal point there, but we really know that it is here after the units place, it's implied. And we moved two spaces to the left, so we need to move one two spaces to the left in the number, which we started with, 163. The decimal place ends up here between the one and the six, and we end up with 1.63 meters. Okay, so again, it's a little bit of a trick. Uh, what you're really doing there is just dividing by 100, which is what we did in the factor label method. So again, uh, it's gonna work specifically for SI units only, uh, but I did wanna put that in my presentation because I know a lot of you have seen that before. Thanks for listening.